Hello, everybody. Hello. Um, nice to be here. Uh, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about uh, some of the grassroots groups that I've been involved with in Peterborough over the last sort of three years or so. Um, and we heard a lot from uh, the previous two speakers, who were fantastic, about the need for change and the need for action. So I hope to be able to tell you a little bit about the action that we're doing. Um, so I'm basically here because I'm lucky enough to run this place. Um, this is the Green Backyard, which we just saw the short film about. Um, looks nice, doesn't it? Nice and flowery. This is actually quite an old photo. Uh, this was taken in 2010. Um, and the site didn't always look like this, funnily enough. Um, this is another photo that was taken in 2008, uh, just before we started work on the site. And uh, as you can see, I think I've got another photo here, pressing the button, um, that it was a really blank canvas when we came on. Um, so as I, as I said in the film, the land had been vacant for about 15, 16 years, and I, I took this photo, and I remember standing there looking at it and being, well, amazed, um, a little overwhelmed, actually, at just the amount of potential that that site kind of held for us in Peterborough. Um, now, I didn't think that I would then be stood here three years later telling you what I said in the film, which is that, that space, that that long disused space has since hosted almost 500 community events. Uh, and that's our regular work days. We hold a, two of those a week, which are open to anybody. Um, and that's music festivals, that's chicken keeping courses, that's woodwork courses, that's drum circles. The range of things that have happened on that little bit of land is, well, it's amazed me. It's amazed, I hope, a lot of other people as well. Um, and in doing that work, we've generated, in three years, over a million pounds worth of volunteer hours. So that's Peterborough people coming, giving their time for free to make this site thrive. And they've turned it into a beautiful space, into a productive space, into a space where people can come and learn and be inspired on their own terms, which I think is a really valuable resource for the city. Um, so you might be able to tell, but I'm quite proud of what the Green Backyard's achieved. I'm proud of... The volunteers, uh, as I said, who have given a huge amount of time for free. Um, and I'm, I feel really privileged to have met them. I've met hundreds, thousands of people since I've started doing this job. And I'm, I'm very lucky to have done that. Um, I'm also really proud of Peterborough. I'm really proud of the city for allowing this kind of project to happen. I feel like it was a, a great show of faith in its residents for the city council to, to, to give us this, this thing to try out, basically. So um, I'm really relieved and, and grateful that that happened as well. Um, so if you'd like to uh, get involved, I think you should. Um, please do. As I said, we have um, open days, which are Wednesdays and Sundays, and they're open to everybody. So if you have a skill, come along and bring it. And if you would like to learn more, or don't think you have any skills that can contribute to a garden, I reckon you do, but come along anyway and learn some new ones. Um, and if we've got some vegetables that are growing in season, then we'll give them to you for your time. Um, so also keep up on the website. We've got lots of regular courses and events. Like I said, we've got drum circles and craft fairs and Tai Chi workshops and music festivals and art jams. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, that sounds like great fun. And you know what? It is great fun. It's really fun. We have a great time. Um, and it's not just fun, actually. It's very, very effective. Um, the things that we do are quite difficult to measure. The impact that we have on communities is quite difficult to measure um, because it's all quite kind of soft. It's difficult. You can't put really hard numbers on it. Um, the Federation for Community Farms and City, Community, no, sorry, City Farms and Community Gardens they published a report in 2008 on the impact of community green spaces in urban areas. And I just want to read you a short quote. Uh, they found that community farms and gardens make a significant contribution to social, health, environmental, education, and economic government agendas. So that need for change that the first two speakers talked about, I feel like the Green Backyard is, is actively working towards meeting the goals that we have to set ourselves to tackle the challenges that we're facing. Um, and it just gives people a way to do their bit, to, to make that, that little bit of change and, and to help mitigate the, not mitigate, but to go towards um, improving our city and making it a better place. 
So it's good fun, like I said, but it's good fun with a good point. Um, now, all of this really amazing, inspiring stuff led me, slightly strangely, to this, which is a slightly depressing graph. Um, this graph shows world oil production, um, starting in the 1850s with the first sort of world discoveries um, going on to the peak that we are around about today. Um, and then, as you can see, the graph then declines on the other side. And what that decline shows is a fundamental change in the way that we live our lives. Um, and it's quite a scary one. I think that Hugh Montgomery's presentation was incredible and terrifying. And this graph has, it invokes the same re response in me. This is very scary stuff. Um, and the, the way I think about it is, if you imagine your kitchens at home, so imagine all the little things that are in your kitchen, and then think about what things in that kitchen are made using oil, so what things are made of plastics. And there'll be some things that aren't made using oils. And then think what things were manufactured using energy from oil or from fossil fuels. And then think, how did all those things get into your kitchen? Well, how were they transported? What fuel was used to transport them there? And then you realise the, the scale of the change that's needed, the change that Amanda, when she asked her question about what we can do in the Western world and what change we need to see, is pretty big. So this led us to ask some questions. Um, this question being, how can Peterborough bring about positive local responses to the challenges of climate change, peak oil, and econo uh, economic instability? Um, now, luckily, some other people in this country have been asking those questions. Well, a lot of people have been asking those questions. Um, and they founded something called the Transition Movement, which uh, started off in 2006 in Devon, um, but has since spread to become a global movement. There's over 1,000 transition towns um, around the globe now, and they're doing fantastic work. Um, now, I could tell you a lot about, about what transition means, and I, I'm aware some people might not be familiar with the, with the term, um, but for today's purposes, if I say that the people who are best placed to tackle the problems and the, the challenges that Peterborough is facing specifically is us. It's the people here, it's the people in this city, because we know it best. It's our town, we grew up here, um, we know its ins and outs and its idiosyncrasies, and we are the people to design that future, and we have to design the future, because if we don't know where we want to be, we don't know how to get there either. And so um, last year we went about forming what's called Peterborough in Transition, which is a new group, a new group of, of volunteers, effectively, um, that would like to be part of that process. Um, and I'm losing my way. <laughs> so um, we applied to City College Peterborough um, and were successful in getting a small amount of funding through the Neighbourhood Learning and Deprived Communities Fund. Um, and what we're doing with that is we are learning. We have been running training courses for the, the members of our group um, and we've been doing some really fun stuff. So we've been learning how to build pedal powered generators, we've been learning how to put solar panels together, um, lots of really practical, tangible stuff to inspire people but also to give people the skills that they may need. Um, and then also, just as importantly, we've been um, giving them the skills and the means to share what they've learned. Here we go. Um, so uh, our group will also be doing train the trainer courses and, and putting on lots of different events to share and to inspire the people of Peterborough with what we've learned. Um, now, a reasonable question for you would be, where is this going? Well, you know, what are Peter and Transition going to do? And my, well, I've got two answers, actually. The first answer being that I don't know. And I, I think that's okay. I, I don't know where this is going. Um, it's a big experiment. Uh, but I think I'm safe in saying, I think you'd all agree with me, that it's much better to do something than to do nothing. Or even worse, to do nothing and then complain about what other people are doing. So we are trying this method and it's been very successful in other, other areas, other cities, and we're excited about what it means for Peterborough. Um, so, um, what we hope it will mean for Peterborough is a resilient, sustainable and happy place, because we all want to be happy at the end of the day. Um, and we want to be part of the process that leads to this um, change in, in our responses. So, 
If you'd like to get involved, as I said, we're a new group, please do come to one of our meetings. Um, we're going to be holding a launch event on the 9th of June at the Green Backyard. So that is a perfect opportunity to find out a little bit more about both the projects that I've talked about today. Please come. It's going to be a fantastic celebration of, of local food and crafts. I think I've got another slide for it. Um, and we hope to have some speakers and to be holding a discussion as well. So uh, I think I'll end it there. Thanks very much for your time and uh, enjoy the rest of your morning. <laughs>